Being born into royalty is just like being born into a regular family. That is, if your family has a strict line of succession, you're set to inherit millions and you can someday choose from a number of castles to live in. If you find the royal line of succession confusing, you're not alone. Let's break it down. When Queen Elizabeth was on the throne, then Prince Charles was the direct heir. When he welcomed Prince William and Prince Harry, Charles's sons circumvented his siblings, Prince Andrew, Prince Edward and Princess Anne, in the process. As children, Charles and Anne were heirs one and two until their younger brothers were born. Because Anne is a woman, her position in the line of succession dropped as her brothers have had children. Now that Charles is king, William is the direct heir to the throne. William's firstborn son, Prince George, is second in line. He's got a good pair of lungs on him, that's for sure. When William ascends the throne, George will become the direct heir, like his father's current position. But some things have changed. In 2013, the Succession to the Crown Act was passed, meaning that George's sister, Princess Charlotte, will not experience what Anne did and drop in the line given her gender. So, Prince Louis is now behind Charlotte in line, but they'll both drop in succession to the crown if George has children of his own. Titles in the royal family are a big deal. Not only do they mark specific designations, but some titles hold more weight than others. The Duke of Edinburgh title is perhaps one of the most respected and sought after within the family. Famously held by Prince Philip, the title was given to Prince Edward a few years after his father's passing. When Charles took the throne, he notably bestowed the Prince and Princess of Wales titles on Prince William and Princess Catherine. It was a full circle moment, given that the princess designation has not been used publicly since Princess Diana's passing. ...next in line to the British throne. And the last person to hold the Princess of Wales title was Diana. When William takes the throne, it's likely that Prince George will then be given the Prince of Wales title. As royal expert Marlene Koenig explained, his title currently is Prince George of Wales, given his father's designation, but he is almost guaranteed to take on the title himself one day. George will likely assume the title and role of the Duke of Cornwall too. Time will tell how old Prince George will be when his father, Prince William, assumes the throne. Prince Charles was well into his 70s when he became king upon Queen Elizabeth's passing, and it's likely that we'll see William assume the throne perhaps in the next few decades. So George will be in his teens or early 20s when he becomes the direct heir. Royal training will ramp up for the young heir when his father, William, takes over. But royal correspondent Roy Anika says that George's training as a young member of the family has already started to accelerate. And a young George knows about his future as direct heir to becoming King of Great Britain. A source explained that William and Princess Catherine have done their best to talk to their son about the expectations placed on him. The source told Closer Weekly, George knows there's something special about him and that one day he'll be the future King of England. But William is determined to maintain normalcy in his son's life for as long as possible, telling GQ that happiness and stability guide him as a parent. He said, I want George to grow up in a real, living environment. I don't want him growing up behind palace walls. He has to be out there. I'm just doing the way I know and, you know, if it's the right way, then brilliant. If it's not the wrong, if it's the wrong way, then, well, I try and do it better. Depending on how old Prince George is when Prince William assumes the throne, the public will have seen different aspects of his life already unfold. When William was a child, the world watched him grow up, leave for school, attend the University of St Andrews, fall in love, get married, and so on. Though George may be in his teens or early twenties when William takes the crown, the young heir should expect his life to become far more transparent with the general public. Daily Express royal editor Richard Palmer noted that George and his sister, Princess Charlotte, will start becoming fixtures on the royal circuit now that King Charles is on the throne. The two siblings are a bit older now and have been seen at major royal events. But apart from little Prince Louis, George and Charlotte are likely to be more visible as time passes. Palmer explained, We'll increasingly see George and Charlotte at state events, official events, being very gradually introduced to the life that awaits them. 
To say that Queen Elizabeth steered a rather dramatic ship is a bit of an understatement. But isn't that all I am, Prime Minister? A tribal leader in eccentric costume? Certainly not. Her father became king due to her uncle's controversial abdication. Her sister became the first royal in decades to divorce. Three of her four children divorced their spouses, and her husband was the subject of infidelity whispers throughout their marriage. Despite it all, she kept it together, ensuring that such disasters would not deter her dedication to the monarchy. Professor Robert Hazel from University College London explains that even in the wake of an extreme disaster, Prince George will still become king in the near future. Hazel stated that the line of succession and George's eventual position as the direct heir to the throne is set. He said, When William becomes king, Kate will become queen. There is nothing to prevent William becoming king other than his own premature death. If William were to die before Charles, then on the death of Charles, Prince George would become king. What happens if a royal doesn't want to be a royal anymore? Prince Harry answered that question, stepping back from his role and moving to California with Meghan Markle. While Harry isn't in direct succession to the crown, what happens if Prince George, a direct heir, wants to have a normal life? Prince George is well within his right to leave royal life behind if he so desires, according to Express. Though very rare, abdication within the British royal family does happen. When George eventually becomes the direct heir, he will likely be of an age where he can make his own decisions about his future. If he chooses to renounce his place in the line of succession, the line will shift to his younger sister, Princess Charlotte. The Succession to the Crown Act in 2013 allowed Charlotte to maintain her spot in line even after her younger brother, Prince Louis, was born. If both George and Charlotte decide not to have a future within the monarchy, Louis is next in line. Though he was largely known as the Prince of Wales, King Charles was also the Duke of Cornwall before he took the throne. When he passed the Prince of Wales title to Prince William, he also bestowed his son with the Cornwall distinction. The Duke of Cornwall inherits and oversees the Duchy of Cornwall, a huge asset that provides the title holder with a packed bank account. The Duchy of Cornwall is made up of a 128,000-acre estate and was created in 1337 for the direct heir to the British throne. The duchy is now worth more than $1 billion, giving the title holder a yearly income of about $24 million. The duchy itself consists of a forest, multiple parks, islands, farmland and a prison. And we can expect with the Prince of Wales title, the Duke of Cornwall and by proxy the duchy itself will likely be passed down to Prince George when his father takes the crown. Prince Harry set an unexpected precedent when he stepped back from his role, and while Prince George could give up his spot in the royal family for a more normal life, it would be surprising. As noted by the official site, the Prince of Wales' role is to support the monarch. It's a position King Charles was in for decades, and it's the role that Prince William finds himself in now. And it's the role Prince George will likely inherit. Harry's distance from the crown possibly allowed him to make the decision to step back as a royal, but given William's dedication to the monarchy, it would certainly be a disruption if George didn't fulfil the Prince of Wales' role in the future. As the Prince of Wales' website notes, the direct heir to the throne not only supports the monarch domestically, but also represents them internationally. In the short period of time that William has been the Prince of Wales, he has already travelled to the United States on behalf of the Crown, and it's likely he'll continue to have a strong presence. George will be expected to do the same. To say that the royals have a wide variety of housing options is a bit of an understatement. Buckingham Palace is the central London location for the family, but there's Windsor Castle, Kensington Palace, Adelaide Cottage, Clarence House, Balmoral, the list goes on and on. In a surprising move in 2022, Prince William and Catherine, then Duchess of Cambridge, moved from Kensington to Windsor to be closer to Queen Elizabeth. The move allowed their children to have more privacy than life at Kensington. When Elizabeth passed, the family stayed. But that's not to say they'll stay there forever. As William takes the throne, it's likely that he and Catherine will move once more.
and depending on their ages, their three children may come with them or move into separate lodgings within the family's impressive estate portfolio. There isn't a huge precedent when it comes to where the Prince of Wales lives. When Prince George eventually assumes the role, he will certainly be able to choose where he resides. King Charles and Camilla, Queen Consort, lived at Clarence House while he was the Prince of Wales, with title holder William now living at Windsor. A move is certainly on the cards. Where George will eventually settle remains to be seen.